Hi everyone. Going to give it another couple seconds just to regulate and then I will be on this. Hi, welcome to the first of a new virtual tour series of special collections and archives facilities. I'm very excited to be the pilot for this project. My name is Mandy Shep, and I am the coordinator of special collections and archives at the State University of New York at Fredonia's Daniel A. Reed Library. The goal of this series is to provide our colleagues a virtual glimpse into how different repositories uh, nav navigate innovations and challenges in their respective facilities. Uh, what do our collection storage spaces look like? Uh, what do our reading rooms look like? What do our classrooms look like? Uh, how do we reinvent these spaces from time to time uh, to improve their functionality or to be able to offer new services? Uh, and what would we still like to improve upon within our spaces? Uh, through these brief tours, we hope to expand our collective knowledge of facilities, uh, design our needs and our solutions. Uh, thank you for joining me today uh, as we begin our tour of Fredonia's Special Collections and Archives Division uh, titled The Not-So-Ivory Tower, and that's because it's concrete. So, without further ado... My apologies for that, the uh, technical difficulties. Uh, it is, of course, the first snowing day of the year, so of course that is going to interfere with any sort of Wi-Fi things I'm trying to do. Uh, so, the State University of New York uh, at Fredonia is in rural Chautauqua County. Uh, it is at the westernmost end of New York State, and it was originally created in the early 1800s as the Fredonia Academy, which was a teaching school. Um, the Academy, with the support of the villagers in Fredonia, uh, became one of four normal schools instituted across the state in the early 19th or in the mid 19th century. Uh, from this normal school, whose focus was the secondary education of teachers, musicians, and artists, the Fredonia Teachers College was created after World War II and eventually became part of a statewide SUNY college system in the mid 20th century. Uh, SUNY now hosts 64 institutions across New York State. Uh, on our campus now, there are around 4,500 undergraduate students and 250 graduate students. Uh, the librarians here have faculty status and they work extensively with the teaching faculty across many departments on collaborative research projects, uh, instructional elements, and committee service. Uh, we also go through the tenure process. Um, the Special Collections and Archives hosts around 200 on-campus researchers every year, uh, which includes faculty and students, and also around 50 community researchers from around the world. Our collections have an international scope, as we are the largest repository of the correspondence and manuscripts of renowned Austrian author Stefan Schweig. Uh, along with Schweig, our flagship collections include the master microfilms for the complete archives of the Holland Land Company and also the archives of classical saxophonist Sigurd Amrascher, uh, Hans P. Krauss's collections of rare books from, a, from persecuted authors, and the archives of the West Valley Coalition on Nuclear Wastes, which is a local environmental ag uh, activism initiative. We also house extensive collections of university and local history. Um, our main library building was designed by renowned architect I.M. Pei as a part of a campus re-expansion uh, design in the 1960s. And the design of the 1990s building exam, uh, expansion features several nods to the hallmark of Pei's design. Um, uh, or, sorry, it's a nod to uh, his design at the Louvre. Uh, the building itself features curved walls and several organic design elements that echo Pei's original layout for the campus. Uh, so here we have some of his design drawings. Uh, this is meant to show the original campus and the, the circular elements that are involved in its layout and design. 
this is a photo of the new, of a model for the new campus design. Uh, as you can see, this circular theme is still strongly echoed throughout it, uh, also in the form of a cool amphitheater, a super sweet dome, and uh, many other uh, very organic uh, type of elements in that way. Uh, the Special Collections and Archives Reading Room is at the base of this tower, uh, meaning that the reading room itself and all of the storage spaces in the tower are round, uh, giving its own space, uh, set of spatial design challenges. Uh, these are blueprints and concept designs for the archives uh, and the building expansion that we are in now. Uh, as you can see, the tower has always been a part of this design, no matter what, that has always been a feature. Uh, and here you see what we've got implemented, this, this broad curved wall here. Uh, there are a lot of really interesting uh, organic design elements throughout this building. Uh, so in this reading room, there are about three to five instruction sessions every year. Uh, in the spring semesters, we host an immersive history class that is focused on developing archival research skills in a hands-on manner. As the library only has one classroom at this point, uh, classes are held here in the reading room, which can be a challenge to scheduling individual researchers. Um, and as you can see over here, I've got the magnificent George Burns. Uh, and the reading room doubles as my office, which can also be a bit disruptive going both ways uh, when researchers are visiting for extended periods of time. Uh, the workroom across the hall which is the closed door over yonder uh, holds our, our archives clerk, our processing area, our supplies, our computer stations for volunteers and student workers, and our digitization equipment. Uh, the workroom and the reading room are currently in flux which is why you see so many post-its. Um, and the, uh, these are two of the more lively areas of the Special Collections and Archives Division. Uh, we do a lot of our work here, a lot of our processing, a lot of our uh, classroom uh, research, basically anything and everything uh, planning-wise happens in here as well. Uh, so it's interesting because it's a research space, but it's also my space. Uh, in the summer of 2019, uh, the Special Collections and Archives Division was selected by the Documentary Heritage and Preservation Services for New York uh, to take part in a strategic planning assistance program. Uh, this program will shape our longevity planning and departmental activity focus through 2023, and we will help to shape the process of the future library remodel to include a learning commons. Uh, the highlights of this space uh, include some modern industrial design elements. You can see our great big uh, interesting air duct system that kind of digs through the wall. Uh, we've got some cool like steel and glass structures of, and of course cement, cement, cement. Uh, however, it does have a lot of this fusion of old and new styles, these beautiful class, classy like wooden shelves. Uh, the layout of the room is a very interesting design. The furniture is very hefty and interesting. Uh, the entire space is currently in transition, again, as you can clearly see, uh, because I am working on a 30 plus backlog, or 30 plus years of backlog of projects that need to get completed. Uh, the shelves in the reading room are also doubling as storage and organization for my projects, currently. <laughs> um, and I'm using them to help in the evaluation of collections and acquisitions that were recently removed from storage. Uh, this room is also used as an active workspace for both myself and researchers. So in addition to commonly requested resources, uh, which we have over here with our university type collections, uh, we have the archive of the college newspaper, The Leader, in these long bound volumes here. And then we also have a very long archive of the Fredonian. Uh, the Fredonian is um, our yearbook and those get used quite a bit throughout the year. Um, ooh, I see I have questions. You know what, I'll, I'll do this on the fly and I'll take questions as I get them. Sure, why not? Uh, how many staff work in my special collections? It is two, it is myself and the archives clerk. Uh, we also have 
three student workers right now and two volunteers. They are wonderful. And the folks in the portraits are the Houghtons. Uh, they were done by an artist that was from this area and a lot more of his paintings are at the Fredonia Barker Library in downtown Fredonia. Um, so the ultimate goal, uh, I guess, is to not have this look like a post-it plastered um, scape for a very long time. Uh, I would like to really have this space be used to house our impressive and eye-catching collection of rare books. Uh, once the space is available and collections assessments are completed. Uh, the reading room space can accommodate 21 students or researchers, uh, which is a bit more than we're comfortable with, but we need the space for um, an applied history course that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the space is used for small class instruction, me uh, small meetings, lectures, and some programs. Uh, if there are larger classes, they are taught in the library classroom down the hall, which I can use for more interactive sessions or to demonstrate the use of our digital collections. And now, because of our wonderful IT team, we're going to go up the tower. Uh, the second and third floors in this tower are storage spaces, with the majority of our book collections and flat and vertical files located on the sections located on the third floor. The goal is to have HVAC settings and preservation ideals. And I know I'm showing you a librarian's worst nightmare, naked shelves! Uh, but we are in the process of shifting. Uh, so, as far as functionality, the space functions uh, overall like the entire tower. Uh, it functions in a mostly adequate manner for what it needs to do. The major problem is that the HVAC here is in desperate need of an update. Uh, it was installed in the construction of the building in the mid-90s, and its controls are half analog and half digital, which is neat, in a way. <laughs> Uh, I would ideally like to make these spaces more accessible. Uh, having square shelving in a round space is an unforeseen challenge, I think. <laughs> um, so it is interesting to kind of figure out what storage means in here, I guess. Uh, I would ideally like to move a number of these vertical and flat files to make the spaces more accessible. Uh, to assess the items in the flat and vertical files for preservation needs, because that has been a bit. Uh, and the major complaint regarding functionality that I have here is if you're doing anything with a cart, here is the doorway that you come in with the cart from the hallway. And over here are all of the light switches for this room. <laughs> So it is a challenge. Um, also, the other uh, interesting piece about this, is, which is why we've gotten the uh, Wi-Fi uh, amped up so much, is that connectivity in this structure is kind of a challenge because it is just concrete so, so much, so, so much. Um, and it definitely kind of makes uh, the internet and the, 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 uh, the digital world kind of a challenge. Uh, the management of this space is covered by the Special Collections and Archives Department staff and student workers. Uh, as I said before, it is two of us, myself and my clerk, and our wonderful hardcore student workers. It's a shared sp uh, space that includes my workspace, public workspace for re students, researchers, and faculty, and our storage space. Uh, research appointments can be made here by faculty, students, and community researchers uh, via a LibWizard form on our webpage. And each request goes to both members of the staff. We require at least 24, no uh, 24 hours notice for research appointments which gives us time to clear up any projects that are in process and make sure that a staff member is available. Uh, standard reading room use rules, no food, no drink, make sure the materials are properly handled, all that good stuff. And for class visits, it is campus policy that the instructor uh, stays with the class. So um, we are on our third floor now where there were the majority of our archival collections are stored. These are some beautiful Holland Land Company ledgers. 
so as far as limitations of this, um, what could be made better in an ideal version of this space? Movable furniture would be cool. Uh, it would kind of allow for a more modular experience and us to be able to expand the limits of a round room, I guess. Uh, a dedicated teaching space for special collections and archives material would be like top of the wish list, awesome. Uh, a digital humanities workstation dedicated to exploring our digital collections. Currently we have a special listening station for uh, our Sigurd Rascher digitized sound materials, but I would like to see more. Um, I would also like a place for uh, students to be able to store the materials that they have in progress. A lot of the materials that you saw out downstairs are there because they're being worked with, and it would be nice to have like a holding bay, I guess. Uh, for strategic, uh, for our future plans and functions and management, uh, strategic planning efforts and projects have been in process this year, but the official launch of our new longevity plan will be 2020. Uh, there have been talks of a library commons in the works, which has meant a lot of discussion about the ideal function and location of the Special Collections and Archives Division within the existing library, uh, and even possibly where we would relocate it if we wanted to. Um, <clears throat> I've also been very actively working with our facilities department uh, to improve the HVAC, the lighting, and to establish an official housekeeping, uh, internal pest management, and building plan. Uh, so, now that you have seen my beautiful tower, hello again. Uh, I hope this tour was really informative for you. Uh, this is a really unique space that requires some updates. I'm uh, working towards integrating more archival materials in classes and instruction sessions. Uh, historically, the Special Collections Division here has been sort of its own island. It hasn't really been understood. Uh, and I'm doing really what I can to kind of establish a campus presence of this Special Collections Division and what's available, what we can do for classes, um, just to kind of make us a bit better known on campus. Uh, it might not be a perfect space, uh, but learning more about these collections over the past year has been really, really inspiring and fun. Um, it's, I, I kind of have been driven to reimagine the, the reputation of the Special Collections and Archives. Um, it's, it was previously kind of a genealogical focused library for community patrons, uh, but I really want to show um, the campus community what kind of awesome stuff we have here. It's been in storage for such a long time or it hasn't really been focused on. Um, but there's, there's really great stuff up here. Um, I would also deeply love to see our uh, instruction program expand uh, because the possibility of taking materials into classrooms and doing hands-on history, uh, putting history in students' hands and kind of having that physical personal impact on them um, is, is really a thing that I'm passionate about and I absolutely love. Um, so I, we have a really great pool currently of uh, super enthusiastic student workers and I'd be really happy if that enthusiasm would spread beyond like the usual suspects, you know, your history majors, your English majors, uh, the, the kids that are super obviously like future librarians, that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's whatever I can do to emphasize the idea that this is for everyone. Uh, I see I got a couple questions banked, so let me look at those. Uh, when did the division start? Uh, so we, we started, um, the, there have always been like some specialized materials here or some older materials. Uh, the, the big, this is special collections movement kind of started with the opening of the Reed Library building in the 60s. Uh, that's when they started to sort of delineate and that's when we got a lot of our bigger uh, heritage collections like the Holland Land Company microfilms. Uh, Zweig was one of our first collections here. So we've had um, really impressive collections for a while. And it's, it's nice to kind of revisit them and see what, what's available and what's in there and what needs, uh, what can be done for the sake of preservation. Uh, do I have a way to exhibit materials in the reading room or elsewhere? Yes, yes I do. Um, 
the cute little display cases in the hallway outside of the special collections reading room. Uh, those are mine for all the time. Uh, the, re the main library reading room itself also has a ton of cases. Uh, currently we are hosting a triennial artist book exhibition, which is really, really cool and beautiful and neat. Um, and if you are anywhere near here, please come on down and take a chance to see it because it's gorgeous. Um, about how many classes are we able to schedule into the space per year? Um, so since I've only been here a year, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we've had different classes than have really been in here before. Uh, so this year we've got, um, I've had four this semester. And then I know there's going to probably be a couple other ones. Uh, we've had really cool ones in, aside from the history, we've had like a narrative nonfiction or creative nonfiction writing, which has been really, really cool. Sorry, I'm like totally trying to not tumble down the stairs <laughs> as I live stream, because that would be the greatest thing to do on the internet. Um, so, my goodness, that worked. <laughs> so, um, if there are any questions, I'm going to hang on here for a little bit longer in case anything comes through. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's been really fun to kind of take people into this really cool tower and this weird architectural feature of the campus. It's really fun. Uh, working here is definitely unique. It's a change from where I was and it's, oh, it's such a good time. Uh, so our next uh, virtual tours location is going to be the University of Arkansas Special Collections Division. And that will be on December 5th at 11.30. Uh, so I hope you join us then. Uh, if there is anything else that I can answer for you, please feel free to contact me. Um, I am amanda.shep at fredonia.edu. And um, thank you. Thank you for letting me show you my cool stuff. Have a great day, guys.